Good morning and welcome to today's episode of Mr. Boskin Helps You With Your Math. Today we are doing Illustrative Math Grade 8 Unit 7 Lesson 12. Applications of Arithmetic with Powers of 10. For our warm-up problem today, this is a what information do you need? What information would you need to answer these questions? How many meter sticks does it take to equal the mass of the moon? If all those meter sticks were lined up end to end, would they reach the moon? So this gives you a little chance to think. What would you need to know to answer these? Well, how many meter sticks does it take to equal the mass of the moon? What do you have to know? You have to know the mass of a meter stick. mass of the moon. If all of these meter sticks were lined up end to end, would they reach the moon? Well, what do you need to know to answer that? You need to know the distance to the moon and the length of a meter stick. So question two says, how many meter sticks does it take to equal the mass of the moon? Label the number line. So it looks like we're going to need to know those values. How do you think you could find those values? Well, if you're working on this on your own, I would suggest using the wonderful powers of Google. While you all run away to Google these, I will do that myself. Pause the video if you want to find your own values, but I will find the values right now. Okay, I hope everyone found their own values. I've found mine. They are on the screen now. And if you get a different value for any of these, your answers should still work, but they should all be in the ballpark. The one I feel like is most likely to be different is the mass of a meter stick. I'm going to use 0.2 kilograms. How many meter sticks does it take to equal the mass of the moon? How do we answer that? Well, we take the mass of the moon and divide it into pieces, the mass of a meter stick. This is a division question. So I wrote out our division problem, however, this would be nice if this were in scientific notation. The denominator of this is not currently in scientific notation, so I'm going to change that. For this to be in scientific notation, we want one digit in front of the decimal point. And how many spots did we move that decimal? 
1. It was a small number, so it's going to be a negative exponent. Now, when we are dividing this, we can think about dividing just the pieces by themselves. 7 halves times 10 to the power of 22 over 10 to the power of negative 1. 7 over 2, what's 7 divided by 2? 3.5. What is 10 to the power of 22 divided by 10 to the power of negative 1? Well, when we are dividing like bases, we subtract the exponents. 22 subtract negative 1, subtracting a negative is adding a positive. 22 plus 1 is 23. Now make sure we include our unit. That is the number of meter sticks it takes to equal the mass of the moon. Our next piece of this asks us to create a number line to show this. So we have to think about how we would like to show this on a number line and what our values are likely to be. Because we want this to have each of these 10 spots, we know our value was 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23. So we want 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23 to show up on this number line. 1, 2, 3.5. 3.5 times 10 to the 23. Now, what value on our number line are we going to have to have here? Well, this is going to have to be a larger number than the power of this. So this will be 10 to the power of 24. Now our next question is if you took all of the meter sticks from the last question and line them up end to end, would they reach the moon? So how many meter sticks do we have? 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23. How far away is the moon? Well, let's look back at our original values that we had here. The distance to the moon is 3.8 times 10 to the power of 8. Will they reach beyond the moon? Well, if it's 3.8 times 10 to the power of 8 meters away, each meter stick is 1 meter, which means the distance of all the meter sticks end to end because it is some nice easy math if they are each one meter long 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23 meters now is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23 further or shorter than 3.8 times 10 to the power of 8 well that is definitely going to be significantly longer now it says, how many times farther will this reach? So we have another division problem to work on. Okay, I set up our division problem. 
numerator is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23. That's the length of all the meter sticks end to end. The denominator is 3.8 times 10 to the power of 8. That is how far away the moon is. We want to know how many times farther it is. So we can again break this up into the pieces of the scientific notation. Three and a half divided by 3.8 times 10 to the 23 over 10 to the 8. Now, 3.5 divided by 3.8, everyone knows, is 0.921 times 10 to the power of 23 divided by 10 to the power of 8. When we are dividing like bases, we subtract the exponents. 23 subtract 8 is 15. So that's how many times farther it is. Now what does that number look like? Does that look like it's a lot farther, a little bit farther? Well, it is 0.921 times 10 to the power of 15. We get to move that decimal point 15 spots. So the length of all the meter sticks that weigh as much as the moon lined up end to end is hugely longer than the distance from the Earth to the moon. Now this number is not actually in correct scientific notation. We always want to have one digit in front of the decimal point, so let's do that now. We want 9.21 times 10 to the power of well, what did we just do? We took a small number and made it bigger, which means we reduced the power of 10. So instead of 15, it will be 14. So that is how many times longer. Now our next question is one light year is approximately 10 to the power of 16 meters. How many light years away would the meter sticks reach? Okay. So we have to go back to comparing the distance of those meter sticks, the distance the meter sticks go is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23. So the meter sticks are 3.5 times 10 to the power of 23 meters long to figure out how many light years that is we need to divide that by the length of a light year a light year is 10 to the power of 16 meters 3.5 divided by well, there's a 1 there. There's one of them. 3.5 divided by 1 is 3.5. Now, again, dividing exponents, we just have to subtract the exponents. 23 subtract 16 is... 23 subtract 16 is 7, so that is 3.5 times 10 to the power of 7 light years. So if we were to put that on our number line, 1, 2, 3.5 
if this is going to be 3.5 times 10 to the power of 7, not a great looking 7, what is the longest point of our number line going to have to be? Well, that is going to have to be 10 to the power of 8, because that's a bigger number. So let's think real quickly about just how many light years away that is. Now we're finally down with a small enough exponent that we can write out the number and see what it looks like. That means moving the decimal point seven spots. Three. This is moving at one spot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven spots. That is 35 million light years, meaning traveling at the speed of light, it would take 35 million years to go the distance that a stack of meter sticks the weight of the moon would be. This shows the power of scientific notation and just how large numbers can get. Okay, our next question is labeled as being optional. I would like everyone to try this one. It will require a little bit of doing your own research, but it is an excellent challenge problem. In 2016, the Burj Khalifa was the tallest building in the world. It was very expensive to build. Consider the question, which is taller, the Burj Khalifa or a, st a stack of the money it cost to build it? What information would you need to be able to solve this problem? Well, you need to know the height of the building. You also need to know the cost of the building. Now, the real challenge of this is, even if you know how much it cost, how tall is the stack of money going to be? What is that going to depend on? Well, is it a stack of $1 bills? Is it a stack of $100 bills? Is it a stack of pennies? This could be a really good problem to figure out multiple ways. Once you know the cost of the building, you could figure out the height of a stack of pennies or stack of $1 bills what about a stack of $10 bills what about a stack of $100 bills how are the heights of the stack of $1 bills and $10 bills and $100 bills going to compare to each other that's an excellent challenge problem I would like everyone to work on. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Helps You With Your Math. Thank you for tuning in.